Peace and grace. Good evening, fam. How are you? <clears throat> so, just going to share something a little bit intimate with you. And um, I guess I'll say it this way. A few years ago, when I first started my movement, um, my Facebook friends and family, you guys were all I had. Uh, I didn't know any other way to lift my voice and be heard other than Facebook. And so I started there. And to this day, I'm so thankful that I have so many of you that are still with me. You're in my corner. You're, you know, you're cheering me on. You're supporting me. And I love you for that. Thank you. But about four years ago, maybe six or seven months into my movement, I had found out some information about my son's case, uh, about the judge, what the judge had said in my son's case. And um, I, I did a post that was really, really emotional. Like my emotional content was, I snapped. I literally just snapped out on Facebook uh, about this judge that had sentenced my son to 25 years of incarceration. I knew he's, a, I know, and I knew then that he's a racist judge and um, he just simply, very simply, plain and simply, just doesn't like black men. Uh, a situation, his daughter in Georgetown had been dating a black man and somehow got hooked into drugs and so he blamed black men for that. And it's actually on the record, uh, which the newspapers retracted because it's just not something you want to put out there. Uh, but he, he was caught live by journalists saying that before he left the bench as a judge, he would make sure that he gave out a million man years to as many black men that stood in front of him as he possibly could do. Uh, and my son, I suppose, was one of those men. So uh, he gave Justin 25 years of incarceration for um, a robbery. And, um, you know, that's, that's a really big pill to swallow. But I swore that after I did that post on Facebook, because it was so nasty. And so after I watched it, I realized it was so inappropriate. Like I, I said some really really harsh things about this judge, uh, probably meant every word of it, but I still shouldn't have said it on Facebook. And I promised myself and any viewer that would ever come again, I would not ever again allow my emotional content uh, to get that far out of equilibrium. And I certainly would not post it on Facebook. I would deal with my challenges uh, and my daily life with as much of a smile on my face as I possibly could under the circumstances. And so I think in many ways, at least 90% of the time, most of the posts that I put on Facebook, they are upbeat and, um, you know, fair and equitable and I'm not showing emotional content. But I got to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, after I left the courthouse, I had to skedaddle and get straight to work and finish up some tasks and some things that I'm doing, some projects that I'm working on uh, in collaboration with another organization, a nonprofit organization, uh, doing some really big and empowering things that's really going to help people and, and save lives. Uh, and my name will probably never be highlighted anywhere. No one will ever know that Rochelle Wilson and Make Some Intelligent Noise was the initiator of these great things. I do a lot of things, a lot of work, and it's always in the shadows, behind the cameras, uh, and no one ever can see it. So I rarely get any credit for it. But as long as I'm being impactful, it's okay. Let's give God the credit. I'm all right with that. You know what I mean? Uh, and there's an old phrase that you'll never be a prophet in your own state. So no matter how much good I do in the state of Delaware, I can't say that I will absolutely be recognized and respected for it, especially if you don't even know that I did it, right? Because my name is, is in the shadows. 
But I got home today um, preparing for my evening routine, and that is, you know, walk the dogs, grab a little something for dinner, and then settle in for a couple of more emails, and then I'm done for the night, right? But I decided to check my mailbox, because there was mail in the box, and I decided to read it before I walked the dogs. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, um, I'm, I'm pretty much stuck after reading today's mail. I'm, I'm just stuck. I'm just sitting here and I'm stuck. And I'm just about that close to literally just bawling out in tears because it's such a sad situation when you have systems in place that are meant and designed to destroy black, brown, and golden families and people uh, and using Jim Crow and, and racism and, and systemic moral turpitude in order to do that. And so the mail that came today, you know, I guess it should be good news. My firstborn granddaughter, Justin's firstborn daughter, my granddaughter uh, will be turning 18 in August. She's a beautiful Leo, uh, a little lioness princess, and we love her so very much. And then, of course, there's my uh, second granddaughter, uh, who's now 16, sweet 16. And, of course, my grandson, Justin's, grand, uh, Justin's firstborn son. And uh, I believe... 16, I think he's like 14, 13 or 14 years old now, uh, 14, because Justin was incarcerated when he was only one year old. So I think that's what has me so hurt and so upset is that my oldest born granddaughter is literally turning 18 years old in August, just a few months away. And the last time that Justin held her in his arms, she was five years old. We took her to Walt Disney World. And I'll always remember that trip because that was the last vacation that we would all be on together as a family. Um, four generations, my mother, myself, Justin, and of course his firstborn daughter, uh, my granddaughter. And she's now turning 18 and we've missed her entire, we've missed it. We missed it all. We missed it all. All of those fun little beautiful things that you're supposed to enjoy. Um, being the father and grandmother of a beautiful little girl, uh, two beautiful little girls, and a great grandson, a great son. You know, we've missed out on all of that. All of the things that Justin wanted to teach his son, you know, how to go fishing, how to play golf, uh, football, and, you know, go to the the, the sweet 16s and, and all of those precious, precious moments have all been lost because of one racist judge. And I assure you, I promise you, I am not taking away the accountability that we, or Justin, made choices. He made choices one night uh, of his life at age 21 that put us in a scenario, and here we are 13 years, almost 14 years later. But I just learned, and see, I thought that Justin went to the party, which he did. He went to the party to celebrate because he was on his way to the United States Marine Corps, and he was excited, and so folks threw him a party. He went to the party, they ran out of alcohol, and the liquor store gets robbed. So I thought all of these years that Justin robbed the liquor store uh, for more liquor, right? Because, he, you know, I'm just thinking in my mind that that's what it was. But I found out today that Justin actually uh, allegedly robbed this liquor store because he didn't have money for pampers for his son, his firstborn son, uh, that while at the party, he received a phone call from the mother of these children saying that he need that they needed pampers and whatever she said to him and it didn't it wasn't a pleasant conversation and so in a fit of emotional whatever Justin does the worst thing that he can do and so here we are 13 years later and we've missed 
all of that. We've missed the Sweet 16. We missed her. Um, she's about to graduate from high school. And, you know, her mother has moved on and has definitely kicked me out of her life, you know, for whatever reason. I, I guess it's, you know, she, she cut us off and she moved on. She has a new man and a new whatever she's doing with him and uh, the family. So, yeah, why would you want us to still be around as a constant reminder uh, of the life you had prior to meeting this new man. And, uh, you know, the children, thank God, they do keep in touch with Justin. Uh, I don't really get to talk to them very much. She doesn't allow a lot of that. I'm hoping that with my granddaughter turning 18, that maybe uh, some things will change and and I will have a better opportunity to to hang out with her moving forward. But it just breaks my heart. <clears throat> it just breaks my heart that generations of families are broken because of this racist, Jim Crow, systemic attitude. Um, you know, it's just, we lost my mother. Five years after Justin was incarcerated, you know, well, not even five years, immediately after Justin was incarcerated, it broke my mother's heart. She developed a heart condition. You'll often hear me say she died of a broken heart. Uh, she developed a heart condition, and in five years, the first five years of Justin's incarceration, she, she died. She died of a broken heart, a malfunction of her heart. It didn't work right um, because... You know, the system, it took away her baby. Justin was her baby and it took him away. And so that took her away. Um, it has put my life in a definite, definitely in a different direction than what I had planned. I wanted to remain and retire as a high school substitute teacher. I love the children and I wanted to do that for the duration of my life as long as I could. You know, Justin is dealing with his own issues of being incarcerated and that is no walk in the park. I assure you that's not a walk in the park. Uh, being incarcerated is a journey within itself, you know, and then the children, you know, they, um, they missed out on their dad and Justin is truly a great dad. He's really a great dad and always wanted to be an involved and great dad. And up until the point of his arrest, uh, and incarceration, he was a great dad. His babies, I'll never forget how he laid his babies, uh, you know, on his chest. Little old teeny thing, little newborn babies laying on his chest so they could hear his heartbeat and he could just father them. He just loved, he loves his children. He loves his children. And when Kyle was born, the boy, uh, oh my God, just like any proud dad who has a son, Justin was absolutely elated, just delighted that he was a father of a son. He had finally gotten a son after having two girls. So, you know, so much has been broken and lost because of the systems. And why am I sharing any of this with you? Like what... What do you care? <laughs> Why would you care? Um, maybe you don't. And I know that some people have instant messaged me, you know, on my messenger from Facebook that this is my karma and I deserve it for all of the shenanigans uh, that I pulled as a young person and the things that I did that, you know, may have been inappropriate or whatever. Uh, but this is my karma, according to two people who have texted me on Messenger saying, hey, this is your karma, live with it and enjoy it, taste it, you know, eat it and enjoy it. So I do know that there are people who are very happy to see me in absolute miserable and heartbroken, you know, but I also believe that there may be one or two people out there, maybe five or six, who are absolutely also compassionate and may be able to relate to this. Systems, the system as it stands, uh, or certainly the way it was in 2010, when my son was incarcerated in, in 2010. 
uh, the systems are broken, uh, are not broken. They're designed to break families and to break people. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know if it'll happen in my lifetime. I'm certainly doing all that I can do in the shadows, uh, behind the curtains, you know, like the Wizard of Oz. I'm the guy behind the curtain making power moves, uh, but no one knows that I'm there, right? So that's fine. I'm doing what I can to be a part of the change uh, for reforms and rebuilding the system so that other families don't have to be so broken and devastated uh, as my family has been four generations. My mother, me, Justin, and my grandchildren. You know, in, in our own different way, we've all been broken because Justin went to prison. And, uh, you know, had it been the sentencing guideline, you know, eight years, had it been the plea agreement of only four years, then we could have survived that. But here we are 13 years in, and according to the judge that sentenced Justin, which is why I made the post, I was so angry uh, and hurt, that judge would like to see Justin do the entire 25 years uh, before releasing him, which will put Justin somewhere in his late 40s, and all of his children will definitely be grown by then. And uh, I'm almost 59 years old and another what? another week, nine days, 10 days, I'll be 59 years old. So if Justin does all of the time in prison, you know, that'll put me somewhere into my uh, later 60s before we get to hug each other again. And I guess I'm making this post maybe to just express myself um, and try to It's got to change. The system has got to change, ladies and gentlemen, because it breaks families. Generations of families are broken because of the racism and the Jim Crow and the slave mentality and the moral turpitude and is not right, is not fair. I don't know why this is our journey. And I know I'm not the only family. My family is not the only family that has to deal with it. But it's really hard. And it's really um, heartbreaking. And um, we all have to do the best we can do. We've got to stand up and get involved in fixing the systems, changing the systems. Today, it's my family, my granddaughter, who's turning 18, and we've missed 13 years of her life. I wasn't allowed to come to her six, sweet 16th birthday. Her mother would not allow it. So I missed out on a, a lot of things. And... Uh, We've got to find a way to fix the systems because they destroy families. They do it. They were designed to do that. What can be done? I've been from the ground to the highest seats that sit in the state of Delaware. I have sat in the company of Governor John Carney I have sat in the company of Lieutenant Governor Dr. Bethany Hall Long. I still sit in the company of many of our legislators and council representatives, some are who are my dear, dear friends, and some we have a respectful working relationship. But I gotta tell you, the person or the people that can change the system has to be us. We the people. We're the ones that have to change the system. We've got to protest it. We've got to stand up at every legislative meeting. We've got to email the governor. 
and such. We got to let people know that we know right from wrong. And we've got to demand that they honor what is right and know the difference between right and wrong. I know I'm not the only family. I know I'm not. I know there are many millions, hundreds of thousands of other families who have been broken by the prison industrial complex systems where judges have relationships with the prison and send people there for financial wealth and gain while families are broken. Just generations of families are broken. And they get to walk on with their lives as if nothing happened. Who knows where that judge is today and what kind of life he's leading or does he even remember the name of my son? Does he have any idea of what he's done that he was a part and parcel to my mother's death, to the misery and the suffering that I go through that I don't post on Facebook because I tried my best to keep a smile on my face and stay upbeat and personable in this movement. This is just one of those moments where you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I'm definitely making a call to all people that will see this post. Please like it. Please share it. It doesn't even matter to me at this point. I'm just, it doesn't even matter. Look, I'm so, I'm just stuck. I'm just so stuck. I don't think I'm going to walk the dogs. And I don't feel very much like getting any more work done. I'm not sure I can get up out of the seat that I'm sitting in. I should be delighted that her graduation is coming soon, but I know that I won't be invited. I know that I won't be there to participate unless I just show up uninvited and crash the party. And knowing my personality, I could, and maybe I will do that. But please, We the people, we are the only ones that can change the systems. And maybe there's nothing we'll be able to do for those of us who are impacted today. But perhaps if we come together and fight united against these systems, maybe we'll save the next generation, right? I, uh, I know this isn't a very happy post and I apologize for that. I'm just, uh, I'm giving it to you real and raw. You always see me shining and smiling and friendly and personable because that's who I am. But there are moments like this one that I don't post. But it was so important to me to make this message, to send this message out. I pray that you will share it. For those of you that can relate, perhaps you have a loved one who is incarcerated and you know what it feels like for families to just be broken just broken and the judges that break us they go on with their lives almost clueless as to the damage that they do and they're not going to stop or change until we the people make them stop and change so that's my two cents in the cookie jar For today, it was a great day, and I got to get myself together before tomorrow. Can't go on the radio like this, right? Got to get myself together and get a smile on my face and be prepared to do my show tomorrow. 
but it won't be the first time that I've done a show with an absolute broken heart. I do pray that you were well. I don't mean to transfer my, uh, my hurt and pain onto anyone watching or anyone that may view this video. But I can't emphasize enough that in order for the systems to change and stop breaking families, especially black, brown, and golden families, it's going to be us, the people, that stand up and demand the change. Because if we don't, guess what? It's not going to change until we demand that it changes. I'm Rochelle Wilson. I do pray you a wonderful, fabulous Friday. And I'll have myself together by tomorrow for my show. I hope you'll tune in and you'll watch. I've got a lot of good news to share. God save us all. <laughs> Peace and grace.